نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one of the most important parts of our Iman. In fact, it is obligatory upon each and every single believing man and woman to love Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the talk of today, insha'Allah Ta'ala, is going to focus on our love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam, Imam ibn Qudama, the great humbly jurist and scholar, he said that it is a consensus, a unanimous agreement among the scholars of Islam that loving Allah and His Messenger is obligatory upon each and every single Muslim. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an has warned us from loving other than Allah and His Messenger such that our love for, for Allah and His Messenger must precede the love of everything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ Say, O Muhammad, say to them, that if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, and your relatives, وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا and your wealth which you have earned, and your businesses that you fear decline of, and your dwellings, your houses that you are pleased with. أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ If these things are more beloved than Allah His Messenger and jihad in His cause, then wait for the command of Allah. Wait for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide a people who transgress. And so in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us from allowing the most beloved things to us in this life, from allowing them to be, to be more beloved to us than Allah, His Messenger, and fighting jihad in His cause. Imam al-Qurtubi, the great mufassir, the scholar of tafsir, he said commenting on this verse, he said, this verse is evidence that loving Allah and His Messenger is compulsory. And that this love 
must take precedence over everything else. He says, this is a ruling on which there is no difference among the scholars. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that no one will truly believe until I, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is more beloved to him than his wealth and his son and all of mankind. And so this is the love that we must have for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our hearts. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, the fourth khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked about his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that he was more beloved to us than our wealth, our children, our mothers, our fathers, and cold, cool water when one is thirsty. This is the love that the companions had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the question is, what does it mean to truly love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How can we identify ourselves as those who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it something that we can just claim? Or is it something that we have to prove? Insha'Allah Ta'ala, we will mention some of the signs that prove the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our hearts. Among the signs is that we place the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before everything and anyone else. Have we truly placed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in front of us before everything else, before everyone else? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us to do so in the Qur'an in the beginning of Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ that O oh, you who believe, and this command of O oh, you who believe is a command of which Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said that when we hear this command, we should pay attention and focus. Why? Because either we are being commanded with something or we are being forbidden from something. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers, O oh, you who believe, do not put yourselves before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before his messenger. Do not put yourselves before Allah and his messenger and fear Allah for verily Allah is the one who is all hearing and all knowing. And so the question is, have we placed ourselves before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or have we allowed the Prophet ﷺ to be placed before us? Meaning in our decisions, the decisions that we make, do we make them based on our own opinions? Or do we make our decisions based on what Allah has decided and what His Messenger ﷺ has decided? Among the signs that prove the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or rather the, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is having the proper adab and etiquette and manners with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is understandable while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive. In fact, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed an entire surah which describes to us the manners that we must observe when in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is Surah Al-Hujurat. But after his death, observing the proper adab with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consists of praising him, sending salams upon him when we hear his name, 
not mentioning his name as Muhammad, rather referring to him as Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah or the Prophet. And other etiquettes and manners, such as respecting the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, when we hear it, when we study it, and so on and so forth. Among the signs that prove our love for the Prophet ﷺ is believing in everything that the Prophet ﷺ has informed us about. Whether we understand the wisdom behind it or we do not understand it. And we find in the lives of the companions many examples of this. Among the most well known examples is that of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his messenger to the heavens in the famous event of al-Isra wal-Mi'raj, and he came back and informed his people about it. And most of them ridiculed him and mocked him and did not believe in his story. So they came to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and asked him, do you believe in this? He said, yes, I believe in it. And I believe in that which is more amazing than that. That which the Prophet wasallam informed us regarding the heavens. And so as a result of this incident, Abu Bakr radiallahu an was given the title of a siddiq the trustworthy one, the one who believed when everyone else did not believe. Among the signs that prove the love of the Prophet wasallam is following, following the Prophet wasallam, obeying his commands, following his guidance, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in many different places in the Qur'an to obey Allah and His Messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that if we truly want to be loved by Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should follow His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say to them, if you truly, if you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can love you and forgive you your sins. Among the means or the signs that prove the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to defend him and stand up for him. And once again, this is understandable. During the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in fact, we have many stories of how the companions defended the Prophet ﷺ and stood up for him in the face of ridicule, in the face of various attacks. Among these examples is Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu an, the companion that was captured after the battle of Badr. And he was taken to Mecca and crucified in revenge for the losses of Quraysh in the Battle of Badr. And while he was being crucified and his blood was spilling, the leaders of Quraysh asked him, would you prefer if Muhammad was in your place and you were allowed to go free? What was his response? He was being killed and tortured. Yet he said, I will never feel safe nor secure among my family when even a small thorn is hurting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so after this incident, when Abu Sufyan testified before the Roman emperor, regarding Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his followers. One of the things that he mentioned 
was that I have never seen one loving another more than the love of the companions of Muhammad for Muhammad. And also amongst the examples are the companions who fought in the battle of, uh, the battle of Uhud. When the Prophet ﷺ was being attacked, and they stood in front of him, defending him against the attacks of Quraysh. And acted as a human shield before him, sacrificing their lives to the point where nine of the companions stood before the Prophet ﷺ, taking on the attacks. Nine of them died one after the other. And so this is how the companions defended the Prophet ﷺ and stood up for him. After his life, we defend the Prophet ﷺ by defending his sunnah, defending his seerah, his life, defending his honor, and his respect, defending him from the attacks of the kuffar and the munafiqoon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who love Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب وسوء فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us in the Quran that we should honor and respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he mentioned him, after he mentioned himself. And so Allah mentions that we should believe in Allah and believe in His Messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. Verily we have sent you as a witness, a giver of glad tidings, and a warner. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا So that you may believe in Allah and His Messenger. And respect the Prophet and honor him. And exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the afternoon. And so the question is, do we honor the Prophet ﷺ? Do we respect him? Do we show our love for him by specifying a particular date of the year in which we show our love for the Prophet ﷺ? My dear brothers and sisters, the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, the third month of the Hijri calendar, is a very significant month. For it is the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was born. He was born during this month in a time when mankind was living in darkness, in ignorance, in oppression and unrest. Not only the Arabs, but also the so-called civilized nations of Rome and Persia. And so he came with the light of the Qur'an. And he preached the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that message was the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To believe in Allah as one and to worship Him as one. And so without a doubt, this month is a very significant month. And if it was permissible to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, then without a doubt, we would celebrate the birthday of the Prophet wasallam, if that was permissible. However, the reality is that unlike other religions, unlike Christianity, Judaism, and all the other religions, in Islam we only have two festivals and days in which we celebrate. And these two days are the two days of Eid, Eid al-Fitr, and Eid al-Adha. And neither of these two days is attached to a particular birth of any particular individual, whether it be the Prophet wasallam or other than him. There are many evidences and proofs that we can put forward and arguments to prove that celebrating the birthday of the Prophet wasallam, the Mawlid or Milad al-Nabi, there are many arguments and evidences that we can put forward to prove that it is forbidden in Islam. But I will just leave you with three insha'Allah ta'ala. The first argument that we can mention is that this celebration did not take place in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Nor after his death in the time of the companions. Nor in the generation that came after them, the tabi'een. Nor the third generation of Islam, the tabi'een. These three generations were the best generations of Islam. The celebration of the Mawlid did not exist during these three best generations. Nor did it exist after them. It was not until the 6th or 7th century of the Hijri calendar that this celebration was introduced. And hence, this celebration is an innovation, a bid'ah, which the Prophet ﷺ warned us against innovations and bid'ahs. The second evidence or argument that we can put forth is the fact that the scholars of Islam disagreed as to the exact precise day in which the Prophet ﷺ was born. The majority of them agreed that he was born in Rabi' al-Awwal. But then they differed. Some of them said that he was born on the 8th. Some said he was born on the 10th. Some said he was born on the 12th. In fact, others even said he was born on the 18th. In fact, some scholars even concluded that he was born not in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, rather in the month of Rajab. So the fact that we cannot come to an agreement regarding the exact date in which the Prophet ﷺ was born, it makes complete, it is completely illogical to celebrate his birthday on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal as most or many Muslims do. And so Islamically and logically, we have disproven the permissibility of celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third evidence or argument that we can mention here is that all the scholars of Islam agreed that the day in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away and met his Lord was on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. This is the day in which he died. And all the scholars unanimously agreed on that. They did not agree on the day in which he was born, but they did agree on the day in which 
he died. And so we ask those who celebrate this day, does it not make more sense to make this day into a day of sorrow, rather a day in which we celebrate? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from falling into such types of innovations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the love of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ghfil lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم انصر اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين اللهم انصرهم في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين وفي الشام وفي مالي وفي كل مكان ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون